I'm here with Dina Wakely, who is the queen of all kinds of media. You, uh, you, I mean, look at this burlap page we're about to work on. This is a crazy surface to me. How do we even work with something like that? Everything you know how to do can work here. It'll just look different. You know what? That's a great attitude. I think about that sometimes. How am I going to do this? And the answer is, it's just not going to be the same as a smooth piece of paper. Yeah, we're actually going to work on the watercolor and then press the burlap into it to get a cool texture and make it look like a wall. Ooh. Wouldn't that be cool? It is. So I love graffiti. Travel all, all over the world and see graffiti. I mean, what is graffiti to you? Uh, spray can on the wall, I guess, of art, something colorful art in an unexpected place. Colorful, unexpected, yeah. usually public place. We're going to yes. do it in our journal today for kicks. Um, it's also personal, usually, or political, makes a political mm -hmm. statement. Um, today, I'm going to make it personal and start with all kinds of crazy color. And the great thing about having graffiti-inspired um, art is that you can't do it wrong. I mean, because I, love that. I, I think there's a wide, a wide definition of what graffiti yes. would be. So that's gel medium. Okay. okay. I was like, is that white paint? No, it's no, gel medium. Gel medium glue. So I'm going to start with words because I think uh, not all graffiti, but some graffiti makes a statement, has, has words. So this is just printed tissue. If you wanted to write on there with a marker to begin with, you can. I like there to be different bits and bobs of and I love that you're ripping it. You're not using scissors. You're not like paying attention to that. No, even back in my scrapbook days, I would do all my layouts with no scissors. Um, I like that organic torn look because often graffiti will be painted over previous graffiti. Mm -hmm. And so you get um, bits and elements of the previous artist's work. And I noticed you are keeping this layer all in black and white so far. No matter what I put on top of it, this will stand out. And so that's one of the reasons I start black and white. Uh, it's going to tint to whatever color I want it to be. So, I mean, you could do this forever. You could use napkins, so whatever you, have you feel like. So you glue under, and then you're just using the glue that was in your brush to sort of seal everything in. So it's like a, sa a glue sandwich. A glue sandwich. And if you're civilized, you could wait for that to dry. And we are not civilized Good. around here. I'm not civilized either. So then I want to throw bright colors. I really think graffiti now is bright. Now you're changing brushes because you had glue in that yeah, brush. Yeah. Uh, you know me, okay. I don't change brushes too much, but there's so much glue in that one that I'm going to swap to a different one. Um, Dina, you got a little paint on the facing page. Oh, Do you care? No. <gasps> I guess Shoot. we don't care. Um, look how cool it looks on the burlap. And that is I, really cool. I'm going to use that gorgeous burlap to print. Well, I was going to say, like, one of the things, of course, is that the page that you have there is going to, wow, against that cool? all that nice texture, is obviously the paint looks different because you have, like, this is a gessoed surface, right? Right. Pre-gesso on that page, uh, always for me. Um, I, look how you can get almost a wall-like It's so brick. cool. It looks like you actually put down a stencil or something to get that texture or used a stamp. And so much easier. And then you'll have a head start when you do come over to this burlap page. Look. I have a background. I mean, I always tell people, wipe your brush. You know, I wipe it on my apron, but then I'm wasting paint on my apron, right? Why don't I just wipe it on the burlap? And people say, well, what do you do if it goes through? Awesome. Now I'm, you have another start. Then you have another start. And I, I say my three favorite words. Oops, oh well. <laughs> I just don't care. I don't, I don't care if it goes through. So I like to start with some color. I mean, if I were a graffiti artist with those spray cans, I would just be blasting my absolute favorite colors up there. And then I might add some shapes with a stencil or two, uh, what color should you use? The answer is yes. I do think that a lot of graffiti is, has black in it though. Yes. Um, they'll, they'll, the, the graffiti artists will do really interesting uh, designs and illustrations and then often outline them in black. Why are they outlining it in black? Because it makes your work pop. This is really fast and easy stenciling. You're just rubbing, you know, yeah, that, with the foam. I was gonna say that little foam with little the paint. blending tool, a little bit of paint, not, not worrying too much. You know, again, you can overdo this, um, but what it looks so cool is all those different textures coming through. So so if you'll set that aside for it to dry for me yes. for a second. Now another hallmark of graffiti art is stencils. So often the, um, the artist will take a photograph or a design that they've mm -hmm. drawn and they will, they will hand cut different stencils to layer to make their statement. And Banksy's one of those artists, famous artist. Now this is my cat, Zelda. Named Aww. after the video game because we're nerdy in my house. <laughs> so this is Zelda. And I think you can, you can make really fun graffiti-inspired art with your personal pictures, your personal photos. So whether or not you have Photoshop 
open that picture on your phone or on mm -hmm. your computer and ch play with the contrast and change it so that the contrast gets really crazy. This is a threshold layer in Photoshop. Um, and you want it to really be starkly black and white because if it's starkly black and white, you know where to cut. There are actually apps out there that'll make things look like a stamp for you or do this kind of thing for you. So there are a lot of ways to get your photo look like this. And by the way, your cutting is very precise. <laughs> Just like everything I do. Now you know why I don't sew. But I love this because what you're doing is you're just saying, I just want the rough outline. I'm not trying to get something perfect. I'm just trying to get a general idea. Yeah, I just you just want it to be recognizable, but again, not not so perfect that, you know, that I'm gonna get caught up in all the millions of little details. And so everything that's dark you wanna cut out. Right? Oh, okay. So I'm gonna cut out her eyes. So you take some time with some of the smaller features like maybe her nose or her eyes or do you just go rough with all of that? <laughs> well, here's what I like you to do. I want you, that's a great question. I want you to start and, and so for example, I have her eyes out and I've done it kind of roughly and then I want you to flip it over to the back. Still looks like and a it, cat to me. It looks like a cat. So if you flip it over, you're, you're not being distracted by the design of the photograph oh. and you can see what you're gonna get. So right now I'm gonna get demon eyeballs <laughs> with, with cat ears, right? And But that does give you an idea if you feel like you need to get with, in with your knife and make that a little better, mm -hmm. you certainly can. Well, not better, a little more detailed. A little more detailed or a little more careful. And then I'll, I'll, I'll finish cutting out different elements. If there's a, a piece that's missing, I might add a piece here or there. For example, let me show you the one that I cut out remembering that you're an artist and you're not just someone who copies things. Correct, so here's the one that I've already used. And you can see that I added the little mouth, mouth and a little bit of a chin mm -hmm. so and a little bit of a side of her face so she's not quite the hum, uh, you know, huge blob. Sort of a cat, cat bat. Cat bat, yeah, a little bit of blobby. This gave her a little bit more definition. Cool. So if you'll pull that page back for me. What I love now is that I can take my, this is kind of a stencil and a mask at this point. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna make my statement by painting around that. And I'm gonna use black so that it pops. Let's just make sure that I have enough loaded onto that foam. If too much is your enemy, right? Right. And it doesn't mean that's the wrong way. It just means you get, it's a little more drippy, right? Yeah, and you know, and I, I don't love it to seep under a ton. I feel like if it's gonna seep under, what's the point of having a stencil? Though I will say, how many times have you stenciled and had it seep under? And then you say my three favorite words. Oops, oops oh well. Oh well. And then when it's dry all the way, you get in there with a white pen or a colorful paint pen and you just outline it where I it think should embracing go. Embracing those mistakes as creative opportunities is always something that's exciting and leads to, frankly, better art. And that's very graffiti. Yes. Right? Because you're out there hoping the cops don't come. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you're you're spray painting the wall. Okay. And so when this goes on there, I'm gonna be able to get Zelda or my demon kitty. Um, and there she looks, there so she is. Cool. And then what's fun too is like, let's say you don't wanna to go to all of the, the effort of cutting your, your stencil. Look at this photograph of my son. I could glue that on with gel medium and then that could be a stencil so cool. look. And they relate to each other in this way, which is really, really cool. And, and if we look at your finished books, I can see that image right there mm -hmm. on the shine page. Very cool. And of course your kitty, there's Zelda. There she is. Poking out and saying what she wants in a very cat-like way. I do what I want. <laughs> me, both me and the cat. So even though it's about my cat, it's about me too, right? I do what I exactly. want. Exactly. And here's another beautiful burlap page. And have you just stapled those tags on? Yeah. You know, uh, pins, staples, anything like that to get the different elements onto the burlap. I mean, this coming along, you could get your needle and thread out. So many cool ideas.